So we're back in town tonight. We're just about to start our ghost tour. And all I can say is it is bloody cold. I think it's about minus five. But if you want to see ghosts, this is the best time to do it. So if you're ever coming to Edinburgh, you come to the Royal Mile and there's loads of ghost tours that start from here. So that's the meeting point down there. I think the tour starts at nine o'clock. So remember, if you're coming to Edinburgh, to book with this group and they'll take you to some of the most famous ghost sites in Edinburgh. So folks, this is Royal Mile. It's the high street. It's the old part of Edinburgh. And as you can see, there's little groups of people everywhere. There's uh, various ghost tours going on at night here. And it's always busy. So what we see through here is the Mary King's Close. And it's another one of the underground tours here to the underground city of Edinburgh, or the old underground city. Very interesting tour. We're now making our way down to the vaults. That will be our first stop. So, folks, up until the late 1700s, this city was much smaller than it is today. Just a mile long and a quarter of a mile wide. On the southern side of the city, the Flodden Wall. I'll point out one of the best, best preserved sections of the Flodden Wall once we get to Greyfriars. And on the northern side, uh, where Princess Street Gardens is today, there was the Norloch or North Loch, and that was a man made lake. Up to 80,000 people lived in this very contained space. But as I said, in the late 1700s, then this city started to expand. The new town was being developed. There was a great wealth of talent here, and they used that talent to build bridges the North and South Bridge. It's basically one structure around a thousand feet. Long. It stretches from Princess Street to Nicholson Street. They built George IV and Regent's Bridge around the same time. The bridges linked the high areas of the old town with the lower areas of Edinburgh's new town and span the valleys of the city's hills. So as we make our way in, I'll get you to wave your little black tickets at me. This way. <coughs> Right now we're beneath the road of the South Bridge itself and this whole structure was built at one time. A huge civic project. You can see here three levels of chambers. They're stacked one on top of the others throughout the South Bridge. Stalactites have formed um, all the water dripping through over the years. The two small vaults at the bottom, they were used as a dry dairy at one point. There were dairy cows kept in there. Um, you can imagine, miserable for the livestock, but possibly worse for the people them. These places have always had a haunted reputation. Even when they were used for storage, they were said to be a little in the mischievous wee sprite that liked to move things around. And it's interesting, during the festival, uh, they have theatre shows throughout the vaults. Props are always going missing and then reappearing in strange places. And some figures have become almost famous. There's the Watcher, thought to be an 18th century night watchman going about his duties. He, and people say he wears a long red coat, they hear footsteps before he appears, and he's been seen in many sections of the South Bridge. There is something else in here. Uh, something that's similar to the Mackenzie Poltergeist. It is physical, it's nasty, it's been around for a long time. The first recorded attack happened before there were any ghost tours. And we've noticed the activity seems to increase as we move through. I mean, we're getting further away from the doorway and the caves and the light. Although some people think this thing really wants to be left alone. Here in the South Bridge, we are surrounded by businesses and residences. There's not many places left for it to go. Maybe by the time we move through, it's had enough to try and frighten us off. Thing is, you know yourselves, if it is trying to frighten us off, it's got the wrong way about it. Most people that come on these tours want something to happen. A woman that's seen standing over in that corner. Now don't panic, she's a nowhere nasty figure, not malevolent. In fact, we think she's incredibly sad. 
people see the figure of a heavily pregnant woman standing in that corner. Uh, I could say she has a sad expression on her face. More recently, uh, a lady came up to me at the end of the tour. Uh, she'd seen her in a lot of details, said she was wearing a long yellow dress, um, obviously pregnant and crying. Now, there would have been many young pregnant women that came in here having no job, uh, no home, no prospects perhaps. And she may have been a victim of the baby farmers. It was well known that there were people that would prey upon these women, that they would identify them, then perhaps look after them, give them a little food, give them some money, make sure they're okay. And then when the baby was born, it would be stolen and then sold. Now, obviously, we don't know a whole lot of details about this woman's life. Uh, we do know, for some reason, she can't move on. Do you turned a corner, a sharp light, a gap in the wall where the workman had been. That was where the sound was coming from and he'd have to investigate. side of that wall was the Blair Street sauna. <laughs> <laughs> now just, just in case it's, it's not clear to you, uh, I, I will explain a little. Um, here in Scotland, a sauna is a massage parlour. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you all get the idea. <coughs> Needless to say, the workman had knocked through the wrong wall. Funny story. I like telling you. 